Today I'm going to show you how to use direct sunlight and lace to create a beautiful pattern across your subject's face. Lindsay Adler here, and I love creative lighting. I love creative natural light, creative studio lighting, and I wanna show you how to do a really unique texture pattern of light across the subject's face without having to own any special gear. So, here's what you need. You need a piece of lace or some sort of fabric that has holes in it or uh, a, a piece of lace or something with an edge of a pattern, and you need direct sunlight. That's it. You can get creative with something really simple as a scrap piece of fabric. I wanna show you how. So let's take a look behind the scenes of this image. Now there's a few things going on here and I wanna tell you what each role the elements are playing. Now I already mentioned two key elements that you need are you need lace and direct sunlight. But you'll also notice behind the subject that I put up a white background. This is actually nothing more than a V-flat world portable white V-flat. This is completely not necessary. It's not affecting the light. The reason I did this is it gives me a nice clean background. The goal for me is to have this be all about the light playing across the face. And I felt that a textured or detailed background would be distracting. I wanted it to be a nice clean canvas, hence why I brought out the V-flat. Now, a couple more important things you'll see. That lace is almost in the frame. It's very close to your subject. And the reason it is, is the closer I get it to my subject, the more crisp those lines will be. If it's farther away, what ends up happening is the pattern and the texture, it gets diffused. It's not quite as defined. And speaking of that, you really need to have direct sunlight. An overcast day or a hazy day, you won't see the lace effect at all. So the direct sunlight is super important. But there's a downside. Whenever you use direct sunlight, uh, it has a lot of texture to it. It's got a lot of contrast and it has really crisp edges, which is great for casting shadows, but it also shows wrinkles and blemishes. So usually shooting in direct sunlight requires ideally good makeup, or you need a little bit more retouching. So speaking of retouching, let's actually pop over and see what I captured versus what the retouching achieved. So this is what I captured straight out of camera. She has good skin and there's good makeup. So it actually looks pretty darn beautiful. However, there were some things I could improve. I'm taking a look here and I see that uh, maybe there's some, a little bit of blemish on the forehead, maybe some texture in the eyebrows or a little bit of texture on the side of the face. But before I did that, I toned a little bit in Capture One. So I'm using the raw file. So what I decided to do is I decided to do a bit of a color grade, maybe add a little blues to the shadows and increase contrast a little bit. But when I increased contrast and clarity, which is what you see here, it actually ended up showing the texture that I was worried about even more. So that final post-processing, the final retouching in Photoshop just cleans up the file a little bit, which is what you see here. Now, um, I feel like this maybe went a little bit heavy handed. You could always back off just a little bit. I decided I really wanted very smooth skin on one side of her face compared to all of the texture and pattern on the other. So this is kind of up for interpretation, but you'll notice if you look at the original image, even though it's direct sunlight, it's not that bad. There isn't that much texture. People tend to be a little bit more afraid of direct sunlight than they really need to be. So in this photograph, I was able to achieve really creative lighting with nothing more than direct sunlight and then something else, a gobo, a go between, between the sun and the subject. But feel free to experiment. Here I used a piece of lace or fabric, but it, it could be anything. It could be a chain link fence. It could be a strainer. It could be a paper doily held between the light and the subject. The point is, understanding how this works and how you can use direct sunlight for creative results gets you thinking and gets you experimenting. If you'd like to see the gear used in this image, be sure to check out the links in the description below and visit adorama.com. And if you wanna see more creative effects, whether in the studio or on location, be sure to subscribe. See you next time.